California gas prices reach a record high. We'll update you on the semester task force. And we'll explain two propositions on the California ballot. Live from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, I'm Christina Favuzzi. And I'm Brandon Jones. You're watching CPTV. A power outage at a Torrance, California oil refinery has caused California gas prices to reach a record high this week. According to GasBuddy.com, the average price for a gallon of regular gas is $4.63. Meanwhile, gas prices in San Luis Obispo are right at the average price found around the state. The 50 cent surge in gas prices since October first prompted California Governor Jerry Brown to take action. Brown ordered the California Air Resources Board to allow the winter blend to be sold in the state early to help bring down the price of gas. The cheapest gas in San Luis Obispo is at Conserve Fuel on Santa Rosa Street, where the price of regular gas is $4.64 a gallon. The 2012 vice presidential debate took place Thursday night with Vice President Joe Biden and Congressman Paul Ryan. The debate became heated when the candidates mentioned their view on Medicare. The debate was held in Danville, Kentucky and covered foreign and domestic policy. This was Biden's second and Ryan's first vice presidential debate. Voters who watched last night's debate favored Ryan over Biden. 48% favored Ryan, whereas 44% sided with Biden. Turn on a TV and within a few minutes you'll probably see an attack ad from Congresswoman Lois Capps or challenger Abel Maldonado. CPTV's Lindsay McLeod found out why these campaigns have chosen to use negative advertising techniques in this year's election. It had the potential to be one of the most exciting contests in the state. Uh, and, and what has happened is it sort of devolved into a campaign questioning each candidate's character. In the race for the 24th Congressional District, incumbent Lois Capps and her opponent Abel Maldonado have pulled out all the stops to discredit each other. Lois Capps has supported 14 years of bad ideas in Washington. Wall Street bailouts, shipping good jobs to China, deficits in the trillions forcing future generations to foot the bill. The Capps campaign started using attack ads as soon as the race started, prompting Maldonados to do the same. What her campaign sought to do early on was to define Abel Maldonado, and so that's why you had the uh, tax questions come out as part of their initial campaign. Uh, and this is not something that's unusual among incumbents, right? Trying to define the opposition before they can define themselves. I'm Lois Capps, and I approve this message. I have not run a negative ad in this campaign. Oh. I have not. Oh. I have not. Oh. Abel Maldonado will say anything. But it doesn't come without risk. The decision to go negative is a very important part of every campaign. Um, typically, you won't see a campaign go negative unless there's a sense that they're losing or that there's a real threat there because there is the risk of turning off uh, otherwise persuadable voters. So what does this mean for voters? A lack of debate on real issues and more focus on taking the opposition's faults and blowing them out of proportion. It's not so much the severity of what's going on as about how it uh, can be used to question each candidate's character. And it's clear this seat is an important one. It's been highlighted as one of the most competitive races in the country. For CPTV, Lindsay McLeod. Well, we'll keep you updated on the, on the latest with the Caps-Maldonado race for District 24. Both candidates will appear on the ballot for November 6th election. Some voter registration cards from San Luis Obispo are under investigation for voter fraud. A group that identified themselves as a conservative citizens group came to Cal Poly in June claiming they were asking for signatures for a petition to fund education. What they were actually doing was collecting personal information to fill out voter registration cards. They attempted to register them as permanent vote-by-mail voters and members of the Republican Party. When the San Luis Obispo County Clerk's Office received the regist registrations three days after the deadline, red flags were raised. Number one, they showed up, um, they turned in the affidavits three days late before the June election, and there was a large number of them, about 900 um, registrations. And we set them aside, and uh, once we started processing, we realized that they were all registered as Republicans, which would be very unusual to have. 
650 of the registrations were from Cal Poly students before the beginning of fall quarter. The Office of Student Life and Leadership used the information from the county clerk's office to send an email notification about the incident to as many students as possible. ASI will also be holding a voter registration drive Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the UU until October 22nd. And if you're unsure about your voter registration status, you can go to sos.ca.gov. In a time where politics divides us, one couple has found a way to be political in their careers, but civil in their marriage. Democratic strategist James Carville and his conservative wife, Mary Madeline, will be speaking at the PAC on 7 p.m. on Sunday. They will be discussing the political climate and the upcoming election. Carville will also be speaking at a special event for Chumash, for students in the Chumash Auditorium at 5 p.m. Students, students can get in free with their Poly ID. Tickets for the main event can be purchased for $10 at the door on Sunday evening. As the November election nears, CPTV takes a look at another proposition on the ballot. Proposition 34 gives voters the opportunity to repeal the death penalty as the maximum punishment for persons found guilty of murder. If the proposition is passed, the death penalty would be abolished. The new maximum sentence would be life without the possibility of parole. The initiative would also apply retroactively to existing death sentences. Proposition 34 would also direct $100 million to law enforcement agencies for investigations of homicide and rape cases. On the other hand, one of the, the primary reasons why we're seeing it now and here is not as a moral issue, but as an economic issue. Those against passing the proposition say that the initiative would cost taxpayers $100 million over four years and millions more in the long run. Supporters of the ballot measure say that Proposition 34 guarantees that an innocent person is never executed in the state. Another proposition on the November ballot would revise the three strikes law in California. A yes vote on Proposition 36 would change the law to impose a life sentence only when a new felony conviction is serious or violent. A no vote on Proposition 36 would keep the law the way it is and assures that offenders who are currently serving a life term would stay behind bars. Currently, individuals with two strikes can be sentenced to life, even when they are convicted for minor offenses such as shoplifting or drug position. Supporters of Proposition 36 say that passing this initiative would restore the original intent of the Three Strikes Law. Critics believe that Proposition 36 releases dangerous criminals from prison without any supervision. Cal Poly's Semester Task Force is looking for input as it enters its public discussion phase. The task force held its first of four public presentations that weighed the costs and benefits of switching from quarters to semesters. The presentation was mostly attended by faculty and staff with only a handful of students in attendance. Semester advantages include a longer period for research and a deeper exploration of subject matter, factors that could benefit some of Cal Poly's most popular majors like architecture and engineering. Advocates for quarters contend that the 10-week system allows students to take more classes and finish unwanted courses quickly, allowing for more well-rounded education. In the late 50s and 60s, some campuses converted to quarters because what the workforce needed was not necessarily people with four-year degrees, although of course it also needed people with four-year degrees, but uh, people with specific skills. The task force will make its recommend recommendation to President Armstrong at the end of fall quarter. While Armstrong favors semesters, he said he will consider all options. Coming up on CPTV, we'll give you the weekend weather update. We'll tell you about where you can sport Breast Cancer Awareness Month this weekend. And say Welcome back to CPTV. You know, we actually were surprised with a little bit of rain this week. I think it was the first of the quarter. Yeah, it was. I pulled out my rain boots and my umbrella. It was kind of fun to have a little rain. Armando Garcia is joining us in the studio today. Armando, how's our weather looking for this weekend? How's it going, guys? Well, I personally enjoy the rain with a little hot chocolate and some tea this week. But don't get too attached to your umbrella just yet because this weekend is going to be very, very sunny. Let's look at the headlines. So we had about an inch of rain, a little less than an inch of rain this week. But this weekend we're looking at temps from low to high 80s, light winds all weekend, and which means that you guys can exchange your rain boots for hiking boots. So let's go on a hike this weekend, guys. So let's look at our weather shot from yesterday. 
This right here is California Street, right on our campus. We actually had some, <clears throat> excuse me, we actually had some scattered lightning throughout the Central Coast. I didn't see anything. I missed out. I'm very bummed about that. I must have been studying for my final or my midterm. So let's go to the five-day forecast. So as you guys can see, we have high of 72, low of 50 for Friday. Tomorrow we have 82, low of 55. Sunday we have the same, but actually Monday is when things start getting uh, a little hotter. We have 86 on Monday, low of 55. Tuesday we'll have the same, but Wednesday is actually a scorcher. It's a really good day to go to the beach if you guys can get away from your studying. I'm going to ditch class, maybe, just kidding. So you guys can definitely come with us. Thanks, back to you guys. Thanks, Armando. You know, it's been kind of nice to get a little winter preview with the rain, and now we're going back to summer. You know, I agree. I was actually looking forward to, you know, watching some Netflix, keeping it inside this weekend, but I can't resist this weather. I mean, I'm definitely going yeah, out. Yeah, going to have to head out to the lounge pool at the rec. Sounds nice. National Depression Screening Day was postponed Thursday afternoon. Pulse, a group on campus known as Peers Understanding, Listening, Speaking, and Educating, was scheduled to put on the event in the University Union. However, because of the rainy weather, National Depression Screening Day will be taking place during spring quarter. According to the Screening for Mental Health website, National Depression Screening Day provides programs for the military, colleges, communities, and organizations and businesses. Since 1991, National Depression Screening Day has provided more than a million people with screenings for depression each year. If you're 21 and older, you may have noticed that the beers look a little different downtown. CPTV reporter Armando Garcia tells us why there were pink beers at the bar this week. Downtown beer got a little pink this week when many of the bars offered pink drinks in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Week. Buffalo Pub put on their tips for Tata's event where they donated 100% of their cash tips, raffle ticket prizes, and pink beer sales to cancer research. This is their fifth consecutive year putting on the event that has raised over $10,000 in the last two years. Each year we've raised a little bit more than the last, and so our goal this year is to at least meet what we raised last year, which was a few dollars over $10,000, um, and hopefully to even go from there. I mean, the sky is the limit. Some of the raffle prizes were donated from people around the community. Some of them include a vacation in Hawaii, a Narnie Ball guitar, and a date with a good-looking person. We've gathered five hot um, men and five sexy young ladies to do the catwalk across the bar in order to um, auction them off as a date. CPTV, Armando Garcia. While other bars including Motab, Frog and Peach, and Marston's will have their own events in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. San Luis Obispo's Fire Department has dedicated this week to educating locals about fire safety in, in honor of National Fire Prevention Week. The department has been traveling to different elementary schools and educating kids on the week's theme, Have Two Ways Out. Firefighters were also downtown this week at Farmer's Market to educate locals and raise awareness of fire safety. Home fires account for the majority of fire deaths in the United States. Children working on knowing stop, drop, cover your face, and roll. All good things that teach your children. Teach them about 911, when to call 911, what, emer what an emergency is. That's very important to know. The department has been giving out brochures that contain safety tips for making your home fire resistant. You can pick up one of the brochures at the stations on Broad and South Streets. Coming up next in sports, find out who the athlete of the week is and about the Mustangs' undefeated record in football. Welcome back to CPTV. It's been a great week for sports this week. Um, sports, David, sports anchor David Aguilar joins us in Studio 300 for a quick update on our Mustangs. What's going on with the sports this weekend, David? I hear the Mustangs are doing really well. Yeah, very well. So um, all, a lot of the Cowboy sports team are at home this weekend. Uh, the men's soccer program is continuing their quest uh, for a Big West uh, championship. The Mustangs are coming off a great 3-2 um, overtime win against UC Riverside last Sunday. Junior forward Mackenzie Pridham had the game-winning goal to the back corner of the net in the 92nd minute of the game. Pridham ranked as the second-leading scorer among Big West Conference players with seven goals this season. The Mustangs will take on North Division leader Sacramento State in, the, in Spano Stadium this afternoon with a kickoff at 4 p.m. <clears throat> 
And freshman women's soccer player Sarah Epps has name, was named Cal Poly Student Athlete of the Week. Epps was also named Big West Offensive Player of the Week with her game-winning goal in overtime against Long Beach State last Sunday. She has four goals this season, including two game-winning goals. Epps is a redshirt freshman from Santa Maria. It feels good. Definitely an honor. Like, it's, I mean, it's good to know that, like, your hard work is paying off. And it's earned that, as, like, together. It was an exciting game and good weekend, and hopefully we'll keep it up. Cal Poly women's soccer will play two home matches this week. They host Cal State Northridge on Friday at 7 p.m. and Hawaii on Sunday at noon. For the first time in eight years, the Cal Poly football team has begun their season with a 5-0 record. The undefeated Mustangs are currently ranked number 14 by, F by FS FCS coaches. The next two games are being held at home in Alex Sino Stadium. The Mustangs will kick off their Saturday um, at 6.05 p.m. without the help of any uh, help of defensive back Alex Hubbard is uh, suspended uh, uh, because of a high hit on defenseless player during last uh, Friday's game against Weber State. This Saturday, the Mustangs, Mustangs take on Northern Colorado, who is ranked 0-2 in, in the Big Sky Conference. Thanks so much for the sports report, David. Seems like the Mustangs are doing really well, and I love the Athlete of the Week feature. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, great times here at Cal Poly, so definitely worth uh, taking a look at the men's football team uh, yeah. this Saturday. Both the soccer and football teams have seemed like they're gunning for a championship this year. Yeah, Let's good. hope to see them in the Great playoffs. Great crowds at uh, Alex Reese Finance Stadium, so definitely check it out. Great, out thanks, David. Yeah, no Thank problem. you. Well over 1,000 runners will be in town this weekend for the 14th annual City to Sea Half Marathon. The race starts in downtown San Luis Obispo and heads south through the back roads of San Luis Obispo County. The finish line and post-race party will be in Pismo Beach. Races will lace up around 7.30 a.m. and finish about three hours later. Since 1995, the race has benefited the Quest to College track and field program. This year, a portion of proceeds will also benefit the SARP Center and Amp Surf. The weather is expected to clear up in time for the marathon and offer sunny skies for the racers. There's Harvey's Milk Day in the spring, Pride Month in the summer, and National Coming Out Day in the fall. October 11th is LGBT holiday that celebrates being out of the closet. CPTV's Alice Turs is showing us how people celebrated this holiday. National Coming Out Day is a holiday for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people to celebrate their sexual orientation or gender identity freely. The holiday is also for straight allies to come out as advocates for the LGBT rights. Spectrum, Cal Poly's Gender and Sexuality Alliance, kicked things off Monday evening as members, new and old, shared very personal but moving stories of how they learned to accept themselves. Everyone's stories are different, varying from coming out to a Mormon family or to their professors in college. For UU Hour on Thursday, the Pride Center was planning on having a booth providing information about the coming out process and resources and support for those who are in the process, and finally giving students the opportunity to actually come out of a closet. However, due to the rain, the event was canceled. A lot of families and a lot of people aren't vocal about, uh, about LGBT rights. They're not entirely in favor of LGBT rights. But then they find out one of their family members, one of their friends is LGBT. And it changes the, that, those opinions. It makes people vocal. It makes people think differently about how they're going to go about their lives. A second Coming Out Stories event will take place later Thursday evening. But not only will students be encouraged to attend and share stories, but also faculty and staff members alike. Alice Turner's CPTV. For more information about National Coming Out Day, you can go to pride.calpoly.edu. While people celebrated this holiday yesterday, a sign near the theater building was vandalized with a homophobic slur. The vandalism may have to do with the play 8, which is coming to Cal Poly's Spanos Theater on October 18th. The play is tied to Proposition 8, which deals with gay and lesbian Californians' freedom to marry. Play director Virginia Anderson said she is deeply disappointed that something is so clearly against the philosophy of the Mustang Way has happened on our campus. While University Police Department can't comment on the investigation, they did say that President Armstrong contacted the chief of police about the situation. Coming up next on Pollywood, find out about the Aztec dance crew that took over the UU. And, and how, you how you can participate in the 15th annual Culture Fest.
Welcome back to CPTV. We have a lot of events coming up this weekend. Reporter Kelly McDonald has the latest on Hollywood Entertainment. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot going on this weekend that students can check out. What, what's going on here, Kelly? Well, there's a lot to look forward to this weekend, but first off, students got to take part in a celebration of Latino heritage on Wednesday. The Multicultural Center hosted an in-depth look at Latino dancing. A group called It's a Kuatli took over the UU with their Aztec footwork and drum beats. Throughout the performance, the group paused to discuss their technique and the meaning of their costumes. They explain how they dance to honor their ancestors and indigenous roots. Their members include Cal Poly students, alumni, and others. Tune in next week for more on Latino Heritage Month. The 15th Annual Culture Fest will take place this weekend. The event will be held on Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Mitchell Park. Culture Fest is a student-run event that aims to spread awareness and promote appreciation of diversity. It is sponsored by the Multicultural Center and Student Life and Leadership. The festival is a free, family-friendly event filled with live performances by community and campus organizations. There will be a diverse array of freshly cooked food and many other activities. It will take place whether it's raining or the sun's out. This week, concert in the plaza, Louder Space, was canceled due to the rain. Louder Space, is a, Louder Space is a group of Cal Poly students that describe their band as a mix of alternative, reggae, and funk. You can see Louder Space perform instead on October 17th at Slow Brew. ASI is working on rescheduling a Louder Space performance. That's about it for our Pollywood Minute. Thanks so much, Kelly. Well, a, uh, a group of students on campus is planning to start a club that advances the mission of President's Diversity. Graduate student Dara Hennigan and the Multicultural Center held a discussion on the Irish culture today in the UU. They talked about Irish history, literature, humor, and ate some Irish food. Hennigan was born and raised in West Ireland and wants to start an Irish club on campus. So I felt this is a good opportunity to educate them on these topics and have a good time at the same time. The discussion was held to establish how much of an interest there is in forming the club. If there is a large interest, then they will establish an official club and have more meetings. For more information, visit the Irish Cultural Club Facebook page or contact the Multicultural Center. Local hotels are filling up because Parents Weekend is here once again. Parents who register can pick up their tickets tomorrow morning in the UU Plaza. Those who miss the deadline still have many options for entertainment. The music department's ensemble showcase is at the PAC tonight, and Cal Poly Athletics is hosting its fifth annual Oktoberfest tomorrow. Oktoberfest starts at 3 p.m. on O'Neill Green, and parents are also welcome to attend the football game against Northern Colorado on Saturday night. You know, it's really good that, like I said before, I, I really think it's great that we have groups on campus, like Kelly was talking about, that advance the President's mission of diversity here. Absolutely, and I think especially with Parents Weekend, it'll be so fantastic for parents to get to see the, cu the culture and then the student life that we have here on campus, it's really a really unique thing that we have here Seems at Cal like Poly. Seems like Cal Poly is putting its best foot forward, you know? Absolutely. Well, that's about it for CPTV. Be sure to tune in next week. You can find our broadcast on Charter Channel 19 and on Campus Channel 2. You can also find our broadcast on our new website, www.mustangdaily.net slash CPTV. From all of us here in Studio 300, have a great day, Cal Poly.